In this session, we're going to look at how we can make attractive maps that we can print or that we can add into our report. Maybe to illustrate something that you wish to show, a pattern or a relationship. So we're going to use the UK Places, Postcodes and Elevation Dataset as our working particular piece of data that we'll use to make some beautiful maps. I just start ArcGIS as it downloads. Producing a high quality map that looks good is vitally important because it's not just about how your data looks in the GIS. It's also about how you actually format it and the amount of DPI, for example, that you export it in that will ultimately dictate how much quality the output map actually is. So starting with the blank data set, I'm just going to add in the UK places and postcode layers. Okay, so we've got a first visualization. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on Wales here for my particular visualization. I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to use a definition query to filter down my places layer to show only farms. I just go right click on UK places, properties, definition query. I'm just going to build my query to show only farms. The type equals farm. Now you notice we've got two farms here. So I'm just going to add an or type equals farm with a capital F. Just verify that. Success successfully verified. Click OK. OK. And OK again. So we're only showing farms within the Welsh area. I'm just going to change this to red dot. With a size of 3. And I'll just change this postcode layer into an outline there we just got a slightly clearer visualization okay so this is data frame view as we see we're working with the map we're going to switch now to the layout view and there's two ways we can do this the first way is by clicking this icon here on this bar which you see the context tab layout view or going view layout view either way we yield the same result as we go into layout view, you see that we've moved into a space, which if you look down here, centimeters, here we have two extra numbers. We have the meter, the map context, and we've also got centimeters in terms of page units. We've got some rulers, and we've got a page outline in our display. We can now resize our data frame and move it about. Okay, so that's the first powerful tool that we have now in creating a print output map. So essentially, the layout view acts more like a desktop publishing package. So it allows it to produce output. It is currently set as a portrait A4 sheet. And we can change this by going File, Page and Print Setup. And we can change our paper size and our orientation, as well as our printer and so on. So we could change it to landscape if we wished. Or we could change it to A3 and so on. So there's lots of options about how you might want to organize your data set. So our aim here is to create a two panel map. One will be an inset showing the UK and where this particular zoomed in part of Wales is in relation. And then we're going to export that to a 300 GPI JPEG image that we can insert into any word processing package or we can upload it onto the web. So the first thing we're going to do is get our data layer 
to zoom in appropriately on the Welsh region that we're interested in. You'll notice at the top we have a new toolbar. These are the layout view tools. So we can actually zoom in on the, the DTP software as opposed to zooming in. If we use the normal tools, we'll zoom in on our data within the layout view. Okay. Just get this to the right size of what I want for my particular visualization. I'm going to use this area here to host my overview map. So, I've now got this set up. I want to add what's called Graticule, a grid of latitude and longitude around the outside that will allow us to understand the spatial context of this particular map. And we achieve this by right-clicking on our data frame name, which in this case is Layers, Properties, Grids. And we'll work our way through and create a new grid. So it asks us a few questions about what kind of grid we want to develop. We can have a measured grid, reference grid. We want graticule, which will give us latitude and longitude. We want labels only as our appearance. And we'll leave our intervals as the default for now. We're going to change the size of our labels because they're always set too small. Set that to 14. And a simple border and etc. We just leave all of those as default for now and just click finish. So clicking OK will show us what we've produced. So we've now got a latitude and longitude grid around the outside of our map document. So the default gratitude is all great, but we're going to make a few changes just to improve the visualization of it. Go back in, right click on the layer name, the so data frame name layers, graticule properties. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove the zero minutes and zero seconds because we're not using that resolution. So within the labels tab of the reference system properties, additional properties. I'm going to turn off show zero minutes and show zero seconds. I'm also going to turn off the labels from the bottom and the right. So I've only got it on the top and the left. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with the way that that particular grid is looking. So the next step I'm going to do is one of the really powerful features is that we can have more than one data frame on our map at any one time. And we can achieve this by using the black arrow as select element. So I can select my data frame window, right click, copy, and then just click off and paste. And you see that I now have a second data frame has appeared in the table of contents. The bold indicates that this one is the active one. I'm just going to resize my data frame window and I'm just going to drag it to fit into the corner of my map window there. You see that I do still have the graticule on, so I'm just going to right click on the name of the layer, properties, and we can turn that off. So that's now gone. Right I'm doing this, good practice is to rename this. So I'm just going to click once, right it's already selected in the layer name, and I'm just going to call it overview. So now I have a bit of context now to what that particular map is. As it's active, I can use the zoom to full extent tool. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit onto Britain, just to give it an overview map. Turn a few key places, because I'm not too keen on having that showing, because it just makes the entire layer a little bit too obfuscated. So that's there so far. The next step is to add on what's known as an extent. Reg an extent indicator onto this map that shows where this map is on here. And we can do this by right clicking on overview, properties, extent indicator, and we're just going to add the other data frame to show an extent indicator for that data frame. We can change the settings, but by default, it's a red outline, which is quite neat. It works well. And there we go. 
this will automatically resize if you move your view in here. So if we activate the previous data frame layers and we just zoom out, we see that the extent indicator here is getting larger. So it's automatically linked. So no matter what we do, it should work quite well for us. The next step is, what do these red dots mean? So we're going to add in a legend. With the main view selected, it's in bold, activated, we get insert legend. The one layer that we need to know what the legend is, is UK places. We don't care about the postcodes right now. And click next. We work our way all the way through until we finished building legend and we can see here that we've got a legend of UK places. Now it's quite difficult to edit the default legends so what I tend to do is convert them to a graphic. I'm just going to drag this into the bottom corner where I want to leave my legend. Right click convert to graphics and right click ungroup. Now I can delete the word legend. I'm not too interested in having that. Again here, right click and group again. It allows me to edit UK places. And I'm just going to change this to farms. But I'm also going to change the symbol to a slightly larger size. 14, so we can actually read it when it's printed. Now you see that we've got the point here, which is quite small. So I'm just going to right click and group again. And I'm just going to make that a little bit larger. I just move them into the bottom corner. So Farms now has a legend. I'm quite happy with the way my figure looks. So what I'm going to do now is export it. And I'm just going to go File, Export Map. I've got an options of what do I want to call it. I'm going to call it Farms. Farms and Rails, 300 DPI, and I'm going to select this bottom, this box at the bottom. Clip output to graphic extent means I'm only going to get a smaller window instead of an A4 sheet. So I'll click that. 300 DPI, so it's going to print well. Anything over 200 DPI will print fine. And click Save. So it exports my map, and if I go to my drive, I see I've got a JPEG image. Double click. That's my visualization, and you can zoom in. You see it's a reasonable print quality. That can be added to any report or printed directly. And that is how you produce a beautiful map in ArcGIS.